Hi, I'm Barbara. Welcome to Bee's Kitchen and Garden, where I share with you successful recipes and gardening tips. Today's recipe, since it is October, is for pumpkin bread made with real pumpkin meat, not with canned pumpkin meat. I always wait until fall to make my pumpkin bread. The first challenge, because the pumpkin has such a thick skin, is to cut the pumpkin. I usually start by cutting out a small piece so I can see how thick the pumpkin meat is and go from there. Let's get started. I use two different knives to help pump, cut this pumpkin open and end up with slices similar to this. Then take a spoon and if you're not going to work with the pumpkin seeds, which I don't do because I'm really intent on getting my pumpkin ready for pumpkin bread, then scrape the inside. Doesn't matter if some of the stringy stuff still exists, but scrape out the inside into the trash and get your pumpkin pieces ready for the oven. As you can see, almost half of the pumpkin has been sliced, scraped, and I put it on the baking sheet. Now we're going to take a little bit of olive oil and just drizzle or coat a little bit on each of these pieces, just to make them a little bit shiny, helps them in the oven, and then pop them in the oven. All of these pans of pumpkin have been cooking in the oven, each individually, preheated 400 degrees for 50 minutes. So when a fork is inserted, it comes out clean. They're nice and soft. If, for example, you have some uh, of the little pumpkin stringy parts and you don't want them black or you don't want them dark brown, just take a pair of kitchen scissors. Kitchen scissors are just scissors you use in your kitchen and cut that off. No problem at all. Next, skin your pumpkin pieces. We don't want the tough skin in our dough, but we do want all the meat that we can get. So take a sharp knife and just cut along the rind or the skin so that you come up with a wonderful piece of pumpkin meat and the skin. The pumpkin meat goes in the bowl and the skin we will throw away. Here is the bowl with all the pumpkin meat from our pumpkin. I put it in the bowl overnight, covered it with plastic wrap because I had done the carving and the cooking in one day and now today I'm going to start my ingredients and make the pumpkin bread. For the pumpkin bread, you're not only going to need your pumpkin meat, but you're going to need two different bowls. One bowl, I'll use this one, is for what we'll call the wet ingredients, which is the pumpkin mixed with the eggs and some other ingredients. And then you have what we call the bowl for the dry ingredients, which will include the flour, the spices. For this recipe, I need two heaping cups of pumpkin. It's going to be stirred up with a mixer, so I'm going to put it into small pieces in my two cup measuring dish. So what I do is just wash your hands and rip up the pumpkin pieces. They're soft and we need two heaping cups. I now have two heaping cups of pumpkin. The two cup measure is there and they are heaping. Okay, let's take the first bowl, which is for the wet ingredients. Two cups of sugar, one cup of salad oil, and three eggs, three already beaten eggs. Let's mix these ingredients together first, and then we'll add our pumpkin. It doesn't take much to mix these, they get mixed up rather quickly. Okay, add the pumpkin. Whee! The pumpkin is going to be a bit chunky and that's okay 
because before we get the dough fully set for the pans, we will use our hand mixer and mix it together. But right now we're just getting these ingredients together. Oh, be sure to preheat your oven to 325 at this point and oil your pumpkin pans. These are my loaf pans I bought at the grocery store. I'm going to use these for pumpkin bread. So I'll oil these, a little bit of oil, wipe it around with a paper towel. You've got oiled pans. And I'm going to use my muffin tin, which is a non-stick muffin tin. And so we'll make some muffins and we'll make some loaves of pumpkin bread. Now take your second bowl, the one for the dry ingredients, and let's mix those. First, we start with three cups of flour. Then we'll add our spices. First of all, we have a half a teaspoon. Let's see. Oh, that's a quarter teaspoon. Here we go. Half a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of baking powder. So salt and baking powder. Then we have one teaspoon of baking soda. And what's going to be important, once we put the wet ingredients with the dry ingredients, we have to move along because the baking powder and baking soda will start to make the dough rise. And we want it to do that in the oven. Two teaspoons of ground cloves. And the opening is a little small, so I need to do four half teaspoons. One, two. Ooh, this is so good. I love the smell of cloves and it makes it taste so good. Same thing, two teaspoons of nutmeg. So four halves. One, two, three, four. And now two teaspoons of cinnamon. I can go back to my teaspoon measure because the hole to stick it in here is a little bit bigger. So one teaspoon of cinnamon and two teaspoons of cinnamon. Now mix this together well. You want all your dry ingredients mixed well. I use a whisk and here we go, mixing well. Smells great. This is where your spicy smells come in. It's wonderful. Now we're going to mix our two bowls together. So the dry ingredients are well mixed. Just double checking, can't overdo that. And here are the, what we call the wet ingredients with the pumpkin. So very carefully mix them together. Make sure you get everything out. I see some sugar on the bottom there that wants to stay in the bowl. So make sure you get everything out of the bowl into the big one where they're mixed together. Mix your ingredients well. And once it looks like the flour is absorbed, you'll have a thick dough. And what we're going to do is scrape the spatula off and get the hand mixer because some of your pumpkin pieces will be rather large for what you want. So we'll put these aside and get the beaters out and try to get it to be a little smoother with fewer big chunks of pumpkin. The dough is now well mixed and that's exactly how it's supposed to look. That is perfect. Now add, if you want, a couple of extra ingredients. First of all, one cup of golden raisins. Now my husband wants me to stop here. He likes it with the raisins. But you can also add one cup of chopped walnuts or if you're in the south, chopped pecans and mix those in. Actually, our son prefers it with no raisins and no nuts. I like it with both raisins and nuts, so that's how we're making it today, at least this batch. We'll get several batches out of the pumpkin, so it's easy for me to make one batch with just raisins, one batch with no nuts and no raisins, and one batch with both 
raisins and nut. I'm going to use a ladle and put the dough into the muffin pan. As I said, it's a non-stick muffin pan, so I'm not worried about oiling it. And I don't like tiny muffins, so I feel it close to the top. I know they're going to puff up. And they're done when you lightly push them with your finger and the muffin bounces back. The pumpkin muffins baked for 30 minutes at 325 degrees and I knew they were done when they were in the oven. I slightly poked one of them with my finger and it popped right back. So I knew the muffins were ready. The pumpkin bread, on the other hand, baked at 325 degrees for one hour and 15 minutes. You know the dough is done for the bread when you insert a fork and it comes out clean. Well, there's a little bit of baked pumpkin there. Mmm, that's delicious. So it's not gooey when the fork comes out, then you know that your loaf is done. I'll see you, or rather you'll see me, at my next episode on November 6th, Friday at 5.30. Enjoy your delicious pumpkin muffins and pumpkin bread made with fresh pumpkin so you know there are no preservatives. Enjoy.